So um, Method is a home to many artists and actually a lot of different software applications. Um, we use Maya, Houdini, RenderMan, Mantra, uh, V-Ray, Nuke, Flame, um, pretty much everything. And it's actually pretty exciting to now use Mari. Um, for a long time, you're either dependent for textures in ZBrush or Photoshop. And the problem I have with ZBrush is actually um, it's not very user friendly at all. Um, is there anyone here that uses ZBrush frequently? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> have you used Mari? No? <laughs> well, if you haven't, you will. <laughs> so um, I had a project that came in, and we had about three weeks to build a, a simulated city for a car commercial. And that goes from modeling to texturing. Um, along with all the animation and dealing with uh, clients and all their requests. So um, three weeks is not a long time at all. Um, having done buildings before, um, CG cities, the textures are always the last thing to come in because there's just so much work and so much detail that you have to apply to it. And on top of that, you sometimes have a skeleton crew um, lucky for me, I had a, a group of very talented uh, graduates who uh, basically picked up Mari pretty quickly. And uh, within a day, they were using it and pretty uh, comfortable. Um, after a week, they were producing um, insane amounts of uh, texture maps, um, which was a lot of fun. So let me uh, first, I'll just show you the actual uh, spot. The next big thing from Lexus is not a car. It's the idea that a car that will never have an accident may be possible. In pursuit of this goal, Lexus developed the world's most advanced driving simulator, where a real driver in a real car can react to real situations without real consequences. The breakthroughs we innovate here may someday make all cars safer. This is the pursuit of tomorrow. This is the pursuit of perfection. So it's funny, everyone's like, why can't you just use ZBrush? We already have ZBrush. Why can't you use ZBrush? Well, like, first of all, we work in Linux, and uh, ZBrush, I don't think there is a ZBrush for Linux, right? And um, the other thing, it's trying to get the actual pipeline connected. It's a lot harder to do that with Windows when we already have a full Linux pipeline. Um, so handling textures back and forth to directories and, and making assets easy to, to grab textures is uh, kind of hard when you have a, a Windows box and then a Linux box, and especially if they aren't both set up um, to see the same servers and um, paths. So um, one of the things that the other point of view is, well, if you, you kind of can't run a virtual Windows and actually um, do ZBrush or Photoshop with any texture that's over 4K, because uh, the memory is just not going to handle it in virtual windows running under Linux. So it was really great to actually have Mari running under Linux. And anything I couldn't do in Photoshop, we could do in either Mari or between Nuke. Um, so let me just show you this little clip, which is some of the uh, test renders of the city. Unfortunately, we only had four shots, and it was so much work for, for four shots. But I'll just play it anyways and show you. So these were rendered in uh, V-Ray. Um, the environment inside the dome is uh, all CG, um, except the car. The car is kind of like a hybrid blend between CG and the actual uh, shot car. Um, but uh, one of the great features about using V-Ray with Mari is when someone says, give me a 32K map and let's render it out, you know, I don't flinch at all because there's some really great tools with uh, OpenEXR to take a 16K or 32K map and actually render it. Um, first one being that it's actual tile DXR, and second that you can actually have a mipmap DXR. So it's only going to load up at render what you actually need to render uh, for the spot. 
So I'm going to give a really quick, brief uh, tutorial with Mari. And um, it's not as glorious as some of the other demos, but uh, <laughs> it's actually a little shitty. No, it's, um, it's a dumpster. And it's a dumpster because I like it dirty. And this is taken at the uh, uh, Santa Monica uh, location right behind Method. And uh, it was shot on a red camera just as a quick test. And, and really what I wanted to do was recreate like an environment, so like a small environment, but just to show a proof of concept of taking a track camera and some rough geometry and then doing a projection mapping. Um, when I started first projection mapping, it would basically be in Maya. You have your scene, your camera tracked. You have to build your geometry, and then you're projecting from the camera onto your shader, and you hope that you don't have to move the camera around uh, for your projections because uh, blending the edges is always a pain in the butt. So let's just load up Mari. Let me see. One, two. All right. So what I'm going to do is create a new project. And we're going to call it Dumpster. And I'm going to load up my model. And we're going to create a color image that's 16K. All right, so here it is. And let me just go to my layout. Uh, here we go. Ta-da. So it's really just, like I said, it's a rough, low-res uh, model. And uh, I'll add the second object, which is going to be the uh, set. And uh, here we have it. Uh, next, we'll load the actual track camera that was uh, exported as an FBX. And I want to set my time slider to 450. And if we scrub through it, we can see the actual camera is uh, animating based off of the, uh, the footage. So the next thing we are actually going to do is we're going to go to the channels. And I just want to set every uh, object piece to uh, float so I don't forget. So we're going to convert this channel to 16-bit. And then we're going to go to the, the same channel for the other object which is going to be the set, and we're just going to convert that as well. All right. So the next thing we want to do is actually bring in some images from the, um, from the QuickTime. And uh, what, what I did is I, we, we shot it on a red camera as a test, and I converted the red footage to uh, 4K JPEG sequences, just so I can bring it over here easily. And uh, let's load up some of those images. So I pre-selected the angles that I wanted to paint from. And uh, if we put the mouse over the name, it'll tell us what frames. So this is actually frame 7 for the first image. So what I'm going to actually do is go to frame 7. And the next thing we want to actually do is get this ready for projection painting. So I'm going to hit this brush right here. And uh, we're going to drag this into our viewport. So once it's in your, your viewport, um, I'm going to press the Control and Shift and actually scale this down. Uh, you really only have to line it up once. And every time I change the frame for the camera, I can just drag the new image on and it will line up. So it doesn't have to be perfect for this, but we're just going to get it a little bit better. All right. So the next thing you do is you just paint like this. Oh, but one thing I forgot. We actually want to turn off the uh, projection masks. Because I don't want any of that stuff. There we go. Now we're painting. This is actually really, really, really cool. And what makes it cool is if you're used to just doing projections and you don't worry about UVs, um, this geometry was auto-mapped. So I don't like doing UVs at all, and I don't know anyone that actually does like to do UVs. So until PTEX is out, 
we're just going to have to deal with it. But it's not such a, a bad problem because you can do 16K or 32K. Can you do that in ZBrush? I don't think so. Okay, we're living it up. The future is now. All right. So we're going to bake this. Hit the B button. And uh, the first time it's a little slow. And now I'm just going to clear the buffer and we're going to remove this. So what you see here is actually the projection baked on the geo. So now what we want to do is see if we just scrub through it, we can start filling in the blank. So I'm going to go to the next frame, which is uh, frame 78. And uh, go back to the projection paint. And we're going to replace the image now. So I'm just going to drag it there. And once it's there, I can just start painting. And really, this doesn't take much skill other than you know, tracking the shot and doing some base geometry. So, um, but it's very, very handy. Especially for compositors or if you're doing a lot of effects work where you have to recreate some of the plates. Or perhaps if you're doing stereo work and uh, you want an easy way to um, take some of that uh, bad 3D that wasn't rendered properly or that's been cheated throughout the whole process, you can just reproject your renders onto the correct geometry um, with Mari, which is really fantastic to, to do. So we're going to bake that, clear the buffer, see what we have so far. So that's looking good. Now let's go to another frame, which uh, we'll just jump to the last frame. So 441. And we go back to the image. We're going to replace it and just do a quick little paint. So now what we can do is we can just bake this again. Clear the buffer, remove the tool, and there we go. So the second, um, I can fix some of these by using the, uh, the other image, but whatever, I'm not that OCD. Um, so the second you go to actually move around the view, you're going to lose your camera and you have to re-import it, but it's really simple to watch. So, uh-oh, I just lost the camera. So you just go camera, load camera. And, uh, you know, that fixed it. We're all good. So now if we zoom around, you can see there's some stretching. So if you want, you can just grab the, the clone tool and just repaint some of these areas. Or maybe if, you know, I got close to the, uh, the garbage can with the camera, I could have got a lot more detail. Um, and I could have also covered a lot more um, area if I had more time. But all of your cloning will work pretty well, especially for like underneath here. If I want to get rid of this wheel I don't have geometry for, I can uh, select it. My areas here. Adjust the radius. There we go. Oh, it's the wrong guy. Anyways, I'm sure you guys get the picture. You can just paint, hit B to bake it. And then we'll just clear the buffer. So it's a really quick way to um, do some camera projections. And even though it's not from the actual camera image, uh, from like a front projection that stays with the camera, it's, you know, it's UV based, but UV based that uh, has like 32K uh, capabilities, which is really fantastic. So with the uh, two pieces of geo, I can then now export my map. So I'm just going to go to the channel and just do an export. And uh, I choose the directory I want. And you basically uh, put the, the file name right here. We want to change this to EXR. And We'll type in entity with a dollar sign. 
And what that will do is it's going to give the object name into the, um, the file. So we have the set 001, diffuse, and the frame, which we can remove that, but I'll just keep it there. So I hit all, it writes it out. And uh, if you want to check it, let's just go into Nuke. All right, let's open up the scene file, dumpy. There we go. So when I go into the 3D mode, if we just double click right here, I have the OBJ being read in. And here's our dumpster. And over here is the set geo. And uh, what I want to do is I have the uh, 16K images right here. I'm just going to throw these on just to check it out. And it's just going to be a second has to convert the texture. And uh, we have our camera, which is over here. And I can actually change that to the camera. We'll lock it. Yeah, so that's pretty much, oh, there it is. All right, I mean, it's 16K, right? <laughs> so there's the, uh, there's the texture loading up in, uh, in Nuke. And the same thing works fine in uh, any other render. Um, preferably, uh, I guess, V-Ray or RenderMan. Uh, works really well with uh, Tilement and AppDXRs to handle uh, these large images. Um, that's, uh, that's about it. So thank you.